Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican nominee for president, Donald J. Trump, and the Democratic nominee for president, Hillary Clinton. Hillary O'Donnell, um... Hillary. Uh, Hillary O'Donnell, um... Hillary. I take Hillary any day of the week. Uh, Hillary O'Donnell, um... That Donald ain't no good. No good. That Donald ain't no good. No good. That Donald ain't no good. I take Hillary any day of the week. That Donald ain't no good. No good. That Donald ain't no good. No fight. In a hurry to get in there to start a war. 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 Hey. Somebody come stop the madness. Hillary O'Donnell, um, neither. Uh, Hillary Gosh. O'Donnell, um, all right, Hillary, guys. Uh, I don't, I don't that Donald ain't no good. No good. Uh, Hillary O'Donnell, um, I know I'm not again. That, that, Donald, that, Donald, that, yes, Donald, hey, Donald, you, that, yes, Donald, yes, hey. Donald, Donald Trump's <laughs> in a hurry to get in there to start a war. You hear him. War, war, You hear it. Whoa. See it on the news. The news. He says it himself. Uh -huh. Ooh. <laughs> swam all over the place. Swam, swam, swam. <laughs>
to make like informed decisions um, about the presidential candidates, yes, but about like smaller, like more local positions, I feel like I don't really have that much information. Um, I think honestly, I've started paying less attention to politics. Uh, I'm more interested in it. Um. Yeah, yeah, I have. I kind of feel like it's my duty to kind of have to pay attention, you know. If I actually get a say in it, I should know what they're. I should know what the people are saying. I should know what their plans are, what they want to do. I feel like I should be paying more attention so that I can make informed decisions. Whereas, like, a lot of people don't have a vote and wish they could or wish they did. A dumpster. Childish. Interest interesting. Funny cam is the next one and I'll ask the first question. Alright, three, two, one. What's gonna be your facial reaction if Trump and or Hillary win? If Hillary wins, I will be happy, excited, and jumping for joy. Uh, if Trump wins, I probably will cry. <laughs> uh, if Trump wins, I'll, I'll be. If Trump wins, I'll be worried. If Hillary win, wins, I'll be relieved. If Trump wins, I'll roll my eyes and muddle through. My reaction to a Trump victory would probably be something like the face palm. Um, I would be very happy if Hillary won. Hillary, effective. Clinton, leader. Hillary Clinton, a uh, service. Hillary is the president. Hillary for president. I, 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 to describe her, um, I, I don't know, it's hard. I would say if I had to describe Trump in one word, it would be charlatan trump is a chump how's that <laughs> ignorant uh, i overstuffed how do i feel how did you feel about voting today very very good very good indeed. very good indeed particularly exciting to vote today um because this is a historic election and um, it's also my first time voting in Pennsylvania for a presidential election. I'm from California and I feel like my vote counts a lot more here than it counted in California. I felt, it felt good to be able to vote today because it was a time where we weren't able to vote so I feel kind of good about it. How did I feel voting? Um, I felt good about voting today. I felt like um, you know my voice was being heard. I felt like my vote made a difference. Um, I felt like this was a very critical uh, election and it was even more so important to vote today. Uh, it felt like the single most important election that I've ever voted in and that's been for 40 years. Um, it felt really exciting as a woman. Um, connecting back to the suffrage movement of um, getting the vote and um, and then having the opportunity today to vote for a woman for the first time for the highest office in the land. So that was really exciting and, um, and I felt honored. I enjoy and take great pride in uh, voting for someone that I hope will be president. I got ancestors that really couldn't vote. So I'm just happy to just be able to just be able to roam free and really like feel kind of free to do what I want. They even had a chance to even vote, feel kind of good to me. Cause it's like, what if you didn't have the opportunity to vote? Like, what, how would you feel like? So I, I feel real wonderful about it. Well, I think there's great future for the nature with the outcome of the election. I think Trump's can be able to bring vision that other people didn't realize was there. If they open their ears, here that he wants to make this country greater, which we all know it can be. I feel about the election outcome. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I'm upset that I thought that there was going to be a different outcome. I 
am angry at the media for misleading us and for the coverage that they gave Trump. And yeah, I just, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a hard day. I'm actually I'm really surprised. I did not think Trump was gonna win at all. I kind of thought Hillary had everything pretty well in hand. I feel pretty okay. I think um, Hillary could have did a better job, or not a better job, but she she was like right there. Like she had a little, like uh, she needed like a little bit more votes. And Donald Trump, he's, uh, he thinks he can do it all, but we'll see what happens. Well, I'm very disappointed. I was, uh, I was rooting for Hillary and I was shocked by the results. I'd want to see a rebuilt infrastructure. I'd want to see Americans back to work. I'd want to see the racial harmony that we've had and experienced in the past. And I'd want all of us to be able to look at one another and realize the value God gave each and every one of us the moment he thought of. The next four years are gonna, for me, are gonna be working even harder to see how we can use community media and different ways of telling stories to communicate with each other outside of our bubbles. From people just gonna start kind of like watching out for themselves and each other kind of but they're not going to really look to anybody else to kind of come in and help them. They're just going to do what they have to do for themselves. I think the next four years is going to be like real hard for some people. Um, I think like a lot of people are going to just be more like trying to do their own thing and like make it out there without like struggling. And Well, I hope that we can unite and come together and make it a better world. Hey guys, it's me, Brittany from Roxborough. It's Diamond from West Philly. And it's Kiki from North Philly. What's good? Y'all know what day it is. It's November 8th. It's election day. Election day. And you know us. Yes. All of us. We like to keep up. So mm -hmm. we started twatching. And we started looking. Looking. And we started Googling. And we found these memes and tweets yep. that are hilarious. And we're going to tell y'all what we feel about them. Mm -hmm. The first meme we have for y'all is this photo of Melania Trump standing in front mm. of the U.S. She flag. She and what it says is, I am a proud, independent black woman. Black woman. She's not black. So what are they trying to say? So disrespectful to the whole race. Like, I'm hurt. I'm from North Philly, so uh, that hurts. We know you're from what? You're <laughs> not even from North. Yes, I am. Okay, it's okay. He he from North, you from Roxanne Barrow. So <laughs> we're just going to get this. We're going to get back to her. All right, any ho, any ho. Any ho. Just keep it. Is that any ho? So listen, what they're trying to say is because Melania plagiarized or. And she thinks she black. Oh, oh um. Michelle Obama, right, wasn't it? Yes, on yeah. the speech. And she played herself. She tried it. She played herself. It Actually, like... here's the photo right here. Look at Donald Trump with this toupee on, looking like like how he looking. Looking like a hot mess. So, is this um, me? I don't know where these people get these from, but it said Donald Trump was right. It said that he said if Obama won, there'd be hell to pay. Like, to pay, T-O-U-P-E, and his hair is falling off. Who even makes these memes? I don't know. Like, you can see it right here. We don't know if these emails are for real because it's this email, right? And it has WikiLeaks. You know what I mean? Yeah, As a website, leaves. and it's like a screenshot. That must have been the server that Hillary has been, been receiving emails from. Being nasty on. So, <laughs> it's email, it's a, um, Hillary sending an email to someone named Derek Godfrey. And he writes, what he writes? Hold on, let me go down. He? He boring. writes, he writes, write down your order, and I'll pick it up. What do you want? 
She replied with a hot dog with no bun. No bun. Hillary. Not even ketchup. She don't even want ketchup on a hot Nothing. dog. Nothing. She just, just wants a hot dog no with no bun. bun. She nasty. A plain oh. hot dog that's been sitting in that hot dog water for about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. That's not even American though. Like who eats a hot dog with no, no bun? bun. And like, no mustard, no no sauerkraut, no nothing. Sauerkraut. What you gonna put it next to your bag of cheese? Some, that's that's gross. Maybe Brittany eats sauerkraut. I eat sauerkraut and I, I think it's it. pretty nice. Sauerkraut makes your breath hot. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's it delicious. Be. She's still nasty though. <laughs> I mean, but like, honestly, like, what else is she gonna ask for? Hot dog water? <laughs> <laughs> she gonna Ham? drink hot dog water for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? She, she nasty. What she want next? Hamburger grease? Hamburger <laughs> with no bun? Who does that? Exactly. Like, who? Okay, so let me just say this. Let me just say this. What you about to say? What you about the to say? The hamburger with no bun, okay, because when you grow up in the hood. <laughs> yeah, but it's that's Hillary. Listen, that's my state. She though. got, she got my money. Oh, we used, all right, potato bread slices. That's in my household, we, we eat hot dogs and noodles. That's what you gotta do. All right. She ain't even got that. I used, as a little girl, I used to pretend that my hamburger with no bread was <laughs> She used to eat her burger as steak it's okay. instead it's of a damn okay. hamburger. I'm so poor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I got my degree in political it's science. Okay. Okay. She cut it with plastic knife. That's what she did. And she didn't even have a degree in political science. She got a degree in cosmetology. Okay. All right, Kiki, why you gotta put me out there? You're not even. Let's talk about Hello. Michelle Obama. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's talk about Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama, she bomb. She bomb. That's what she, she is. She a she a, all right. She a snack. Okay. She's she's slim thick. All right. She a, she a whole snack. Like she popping. Yes. Okay. You know what? We're gonna write her name on the ballot instead of voting for Hillary. That's what we're gonna do. Hillary. Because Michelle needs president. to be president. Soon. No, Michelle needs to be president. Michelle needs to be president. You're right. She I didn't mean. Hillary and she's smart for it. She got all the um. She been in there experience. Before, so she knows her husband happened. was the president. Mm -hmm. So it's only right. She got a whole family that's nice and healthy. Like she knows what she's doing. Honestly, okay, listen. She needs to be president. We all know she needs to be president. We all love her. We all love the way she talk. Mm -hmm. We love the way she walk. We love the way she do this. Even Beyonce crushing. <laughs> so let's not even front. But ain't she not like, ain't she like 50 or 60 years old? How old is she? I don't even know. to be like 35 to be a Let's president. look this up. Let's look it up. What you mean? You gotta Wait. be like 35 because Donald you gotta be is 35 like 110. You gotta be 35 to be a president, I think. Thank you for watching our show. My name is Kiki from North Philly. It's your girl Donna from West Philly, what's poppin'? And it's your girl Brittany from Roxborough. And we had just sat here and we talked about the election over in April. Go out and vote, guys. Today. And I am vote. I'm with her. We all with her. Hey guys, it's Stefan and I'm here from Philly Camp. And this week in the following week, we've been looking at different stuff about the DNC, uh, police brutality, um, voting, and now we're, we're taking you on a little experience of me about to sign myself up for voting. Sorry, so if it's not a house, then you'll put that stuff. If it is a house, then. Oh, so I don't let her put this? Hey guys, you know, this is the end of the registering the vote. And um, yeah, I'm at the last little part. All you gotta do is bam, scroll down. Um, wait, what is this? Hey guys, I thought I was done, but I'm not. I, they just need my signature, like, right? And so we want to do that. All right, I'm finished doing the registration for the, um, the voting online. And now all I gotta do is hit this one little button. And that's it. I did it, you guys. Yay. 
I'm a registered voter now, I think. And now I gotta wait for the information. And that's it. Have a good day, you guys. Hey guys, it's your boy Stefan. Last time you saw me, I was on online regist registering to vote. It was pretty cool. My vote counted a little bit. And uh, I'm about to tell y'all what happened. I went to the voting polls, signed my little name. It was cool. It was fun. I was with my mom and my dad. Took some pictures, not in the voting polls, but outside of the building and all that. And uh, yeah, some guy was rushing me, but I voted for the right person, answered all the questions the right way, um, and I did my best. I hope Donald Trump is a good president, hope he make good decisions, and uh, yeah, that's it. Hey, fellow Americans, um, <laughs> I, I'm about to vote. Here's the school I'm at. For the first time? For the first time. First time voter. My mom. My dad over here. Whoa! About to walk right in there. First time. This is big. Are you on live or you just recording on your phone? Just recording. You know. How you doing? Okay. They out here wild on the day. Yeah. It's a nice day outside. Don't About to walk cold. in. I don't know. Can't really see me. I'm a little dark. Here you go. First time. See? Let's, let's get this picture real quick. Vote here. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this seat. There you go. I'm sorry. This is a big thing. Walking in. Alright. I can't record no more. It's about to get real. I'm just praise God, praise, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, she's so hype. Oh, she went out. This is this is me about to vote. See you later. No, you gotta cut that off. Yo, my name's Odelio. Um, this is my boy Nicholas. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about why Trump is a horrible president and why you shouldn't vote for him. Um, so, for all, like, start things off, bro. Um, Trump is a historical moron, to be honest with you. Like, legit, he's gonna put a wall on Mexico. And the people, they're like, okay, well, this is racially wrong, but not that it's racially wrong, but it's more like, like in, his, in history, like, bro, like, they've had the Great Wall of China. Okay. They've had the Berlin Wall. And both of those failed badly. Yeah. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, this, like you're just going to repeat history. And exactly. you're just going to, like, like, it's insanity. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, yeah. He's like, 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 you're not supposed to be repeating that. Like, if it's already worked, like, wrongfully twice, like, then why are you going to do it again? You the only reason why the Berlin Wall was built was, like, a punishment from the Soviets when, like, Hitler committed suicide. So they separated West and East Germany, and for many years, like, when people cross, they just get killed like this. And now this is probably what's going to happen here when, like, Mexicans, like, try to, like, pass through the wall. Oh, no, it probably might even be worse than that. They're probably going to go airborne on that thing. Yeah. I don't even know. But, yeah, that's already one thing. I mean, you could go ahead and talk about, um, what was it, no experience? Yeah. yeah like, he like, doesn't have experience whatsoever. Because during these, like, past few candidates, we see, like... They have experience as like a governor or senator of a state. Trump, he doesn't know anything whatsoever. What what does he know? He's like the CEO of his own company and said he got a small loan of a million dollars and rented a house in Brooklyn or See, something. See, and that's the thing, bro. Look, because he owns a company, he's not really targeting for presidency. You get what I'm saying? Like, legit, he only cares about his company. Yeah, he's terrible. Why? Why should I trust him? Why? No. Why? Just America. Like, like, not... like you, you literally know this information. Like, like, why would you want to vote? Like, why do people vote for him? He's just gonna make America suck again. Yeah, he's not gonna make like it's just why. Just, I, I just can't... why? We're we're so stupid as like people all together. 
I, I, I just... We're, we, we're evolving backwards. Yeah, I'm man. out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, it's Donnell Simmons, Trump's cousin. Hey guys, it's Donnell Simmons, Trump, and I'm Trump's cousin. Here are some tips on dealing with the outcome of the election. Hey, I know you. You might feel sad and down that your candidate didn't win. It's okay, because they, they can still impact the world somehow, some way. I understand your feelings, and Darnell is here for you. You can move to Canada. I've been to Canada. It's a nice place. Um, they got a waterfall. It's called Niagara Falls. They got like a nice food there. They Canada. They got the maple bacon. Here's how you can get over it. You can still your vote still matters. You can still um, help your community by volunteering and cleaning up and helping the community around you, making it a better place. Be the change. Only you can impact yourself and others. Canada is great and all, but immigration could be very expensive. You might still have to pay U.S. taxes, and once you move and say goodbye, you're going to be really sad. You might miss um, your favorite stores like Trader Joe's and Target and Walmart. I just added Walmart. Yeah, it's good. They have Walmart there, though. Oh, <laughs> not Walmart. I'm sorry to tell you guys that, but maybe Target and Trader Joe's. That's all, guys. And just just to let you know, life sucks, and you're going to die eventually. But it's okay. Just know that you're um you've got another four years to make it better, and you can do your own thing. You could you should vote next four years and like make America great again. Oops, I'm sorry I said that. It just slipped. I like Canada, but I don't like it. I woke up every single day and the first thing I said was, my name is Kendall Rosenberg and this is the day I die. I started using heavily when I was 16. My using was about body image and being enough.
and looking a certain way and acting a certain way. And then it turned into something else. It turned into using to be well. And uh, I hated myself. I was an addict in every way, shape, and form, and I saw how that affected every single part of my life, including my eating and the way that I talked to myself. And I stopped eating uh, at one point in my life. <clears throat> And then I started eating again because that never lasts too long. Lunch. I would um, order pizza and a calzone and eggplant parmesan every single night. And I would keep the lights off in my apartment because I never wanted to see how much I had eaten. And I just felt so much shame, but I couldn't stop eating. And then, like a light switch, uh, I stopped eating again, uh, and I was doing harder drugs that made it helpful for me to stop eating. Um, in the past, vanity has been about being enough in a way that's not connected to love um, and bettering myself. It was, it was for other people, it was for society, it was dark and damaging and destructive. My vanity today is more centered in love. It's like I ask my little inner child what she wants to wear today and I let her wear it. How do I talk about the inner child? The inner child is everything. When I was using drugs and drinking and caught in the throes of oblivion, I kept obsessing over the word safe. I didn't feel safe. I felt really disconnected and lost and I didn't feel like a child anymore. Although I was. I feel like I got a sense of childlikeness back um, or my innocence back when I got clean and I stopped feeling this impending doom coming my way. And um, I did a lot of work on myself. And this, this semblance of inner child, I just ask her what she wants to eat, what she wants to do today. I make sure that my inner child gets some sort of say every single day. I feel like that helps me stay on my path of love and self-love. I had this conversation with her. It's kind of like, okay, when I talk to my inner child, it's like snapping into clown form. And it's like this aphasic sense um, of the first thing that comes to my mind I have to say, and if I have to think, I'm lying. Um, that's how we do it in clown. Uh, my, my clown teacher, whenever I was in my clown form, would ask me what my name was, and if I stuttered, he'd say, never mind. And we'd come back to that later because it had to be the first thing on my mind. And that's kind of the way I think of my inner child. And um, I connected with her not too long ago. And I think she was really mad at me for a long time. But she told me that I was the hero of her dreams because the one thing I never gave up on was her dream of doing theater for the rest of her life. Yeah, I try to fill my connection to her every single day.